All right, so this is the original board. They're all already working. So this one seemed to have an issue with kind of a kind of a staticky glitch that seemed to be fixed with the 100 microfarad capacitors replaced, but the 22 microfarad capacitors in the kit I had were too big, even though they were supposed to be two millimeters. They actually came four millimeters and that wouldn't work. So I had to order separate two millimeter capacitors as you can see here. And if you can't, I got this right there. So you can see up close. There's also a light on this, but I'm gonna move this out of the way because it's gonna block the video. So we're gonna go ahead and change these capacitors. The important thing though, is before you put a new capacitor on, you do actually wanna test it because you don't wanna put on a bad capacitor. These are tiny, but we can still test them. Sort of get this contact connected. And you can see it's just about 22, it's close enough. So <clears throat> you should test all the new capacitors to make sure that they're within the proper range and not defective. Then go ahead and change these capacitors. Now I'm gonna move these out of the way just a little bit. And I'm, I'm a little messy when I do this. I mean, some of these older boards, the solder is just so difficult to get off. And I'm also not using an air gun. So let me just see if I can get one. These are not so bad because there's just two contacts. And let's try this one over here. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's try this one. This one actually looks like the top is damaged. I didn't notice that before. If the tops of a capacitor looks damaged, there's a chance that the capacitor is going bad or should be replaced soon. Uh, let's see the best way to get in there. Let's just start with this side. This one's in the way because I'm right-handed. Now, normally with an air gun, it's a little easier because you can eat both sides at once. But in this case, the way these are laid out, it's not too hard to lift each side carefully because you don't want to um, rip the contact off of the board. This actually needs a little higher temperature. I've noticed that these boards uh, don't melt the solder at the temperature as a lot of the other newer boards I have. Sometimes there's also an adhesive holding down the capacitor as well as the solder. So sometimes it's the adhesive, not the solder that's, hold, that's um, hard to get off. I'm slowly lifting one side, then the other side, because some of these may have adhesive or solder underneath that isn't melting. So I've noticed it takes a higher temperature. And you can see it wiggling. You can see it's loose. It's just not coming off. And again, don't just rip it off because you might actually damage the contacts. Also, don't keep the soldering iron on the board too long because you might burn the board. That side's off. It's this side that's stuck. Why is this side stuck? This side's actually all the way off. I can actually see underneath. I could actually approach it from this side. Oh, 
wow, that one was just stuck so hard that it actually ripped the contact off of the capacitor. So the contact is actually still on there. Okay, that side's clear. This side, for some reason, is just stuck on there. There. Got the uh, broken piece of the contact off. And I've been actually cleaning the old solder, put a little flux on there with a flux pen. And I've been trying to clean off the solder. I'm going to have to increase the temperature here just a little bit. I think the solder requires a higher temperature. And I have been trying to remove the old solder as much as possible. You can see it's actually soaking into here. And for this particular purpose, I'm not using solder paste. I'm actually putting a drop of solder on here. And attaching here's the one I just tested this one this is the capacitor just tested and make sure to orient it properly the negative is on this side and because it's only two contacts I've just been soldering one edge and then the other edge Very carefully. Yeah, let's see. Contacted. Now you noticed in this case I didn't add flux, but in some cases I I mean most cases I normally would. But I can see the solder actually go over the contact from the capacitor. If the solder doesn't stick there. So that's one. Now I just have to do six more. Now this capacitor that we took off looks actually damaged. Let's take a look. Can't really see it in here. It's hard to see. I'm going to see if I can still test it, even though that contact broke off. Let's take up the plastic piece right here. I'm just curious if this capacitor is still good. Still within range. It's a little high, but higher than the other ones. Not much. But in any case, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them and then test this board out. And I'm sure it's going to be fine because it board already works. We just um, take it a precaution to make sure it continues to work for the next few years by replacing all these capacitors. Hello, and I had multiple LCD screens, and when I opened them, they had different boards. Uh, one of them has um, this board. When the last video I was replacing the 22 uh, microfarad capacitors, but there's also this board that doesn't have any 22 capac uh, 22 micro capacitors. They have hundreds and tens. 
So if you take a look at these two boards, side by side. And maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, you can see the different board layouts where this is the input to the LCD screen. This is the input from the computer device or the game machine. This is the plug for the LCD control panel. So I had just finished doing these. So I am now going to um, replace these 100 microfiber capacitors and these tens. I think there's nine of, nine of these, one, yeah, and uh, six of these. It's the same process as in the other video, but I'll just do one, uh, one of the larger ones, just to show you. All right, first let's take one of the 100 microfarad capacitors and test it out. Always test your new capacitors to make sure they're not already bad before you put them in. That's close enough to 100. There's always going to be a little degree um, of error. And to make this as simple as possible, let's just take one that's kind of sitting out here by itself. Here we go. Now, I had mentioned in the other video that I've noticed on some of these, I need to make the soldering iron hotter to get the old solder to melt. I'm not sure if that's the case for this board. Let's find out. Clean the tip off a little bit. And again, I'm not using a hot air gun, even though I have one. For these types of capacitors, I'm finding it easier just to do this. And once again, I precaution if the soldering iron's too hot and you let it sit on the contact for too long, it could burn the board. So don't do that. Um, I've already found that some of these boards here can handle that heat. But I've also found that there's been like either an adhesive in some cases, or the solder is just so hard to take off that you have to be careful not to rip it off. Another thing I found helps with some of this really old solder is just to add a dab of new solder. It seems to help distribute the heat. and let the contact lift off. There we go. So this lifted off nicely. Um, yeah, let's just go through the whole process. Been adding a little flux. Oh, the light's too dim here. Maybe Maybe that works. Been adding a bit of flux. And using this braided ribbon of copper to lift off some of the old solder. Clean it out just a bit. I don't have the right soldering tip for this. I don't know where it is. Otherwise, I might use a flat solder tip. Now, in some cases, I use this solder paste 
but I've been just dabbing a little bit of new solder. Not too much, or it'll be too high, then you can't get the capacitor to lay flat. So that's the old capacitor. I believe, I believe this is the one we tested. Let's make sure that the contacts are out just a little bit. And I will, again, add a little flux. Orienting this the right way, that negative side, it's labeled on the um, diagram there. It's not going on there yet. Let's do this side first. Laying this flat, gently pushing it down not to damage it. If there were multiple pins, if there's more than two pins, I wouldn't be doing it this way. I'd be using the solder paste and maybe a hot air gun. Don't leave it on too long because it'll, don't leave the starting iron too long, it'll heat up. It seems kind of sturdy. I didn't have very much solder, so I'm going to add a tiny bead. And visually, I can see that it actually did melt properly over the contact. It actually went over the contact, so it's not going to go anywhere. And this one's done. Now I just have to do it eight more times here and six more times here. Just for good measure, let's just test, test the old uh, capacitor to see what it was reading. So this is the one we just pulled off the board. Yeah, it's probably still good. It did fluctuate a little bit in the beginning, but not sure if that's a problem or not. Let's try it again. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, that's telling me something might be not right just to compare it to another new capacitor. Oops. Oh no, this one kind of did it too. It might just be that these are not contacting um, fully when I attach them. So there's no way to really tell, but I'm going to replace them anyway because they are over 10, maybe 15 years old. So it's probably a good time to, ch to change them. 